with our first guest, uh, Mihir. A uh, brief introduction. Mihir Joshi, yeah, Mihir, please come up. Is a prolific talk show host and lead singer of his own band called the Mihir Joshi yeah. Band, who just released their debut album, yeah. Mumbai Blues, on the Times Music label. His talk show, The MJ Show, a bi weekly YouTube show, has just completed 50 episodes, has over 4,000 subscribers and almost 7 lakh views. Mihir started his career, yeah, that's a lot. Mihir started his career as a radio jockey with FM Rainbow and went on to join 94.3 Radio 1. Having himself met and interviewed over 250 artists from around the world, including Metallica, Mark Knopfler, Engelbert Humperdinck, Iron Maiden, Deep Purple, John Mayer, over the past 10 years, Mihir now finds himself in Sam's hot seat. <laughs> Apart from radio, Mihir has hosted television shows on Z Business and MTV, done hundreds of live events, written for the Hindustan Times, Mumbai Mirror, Midday, dabbled in acting, and has also hosted the four-day news show for Sky News UK during the 26-11 attacks for which the Mumbai Sky News team got themselves a, a BAFTA nomination. That's pretty good. The Mumbai Blues, the album, was launched on the 31st of May at the Harman Live Arena at the Palm Expo in Mumbai at the hands of Esan and Loy of the Shankar Esan Loy fame. It has become so popular that it is featured on the homepage of iTunes, Ghana.com, OKListen.com, Nokia Mix Radio and TimesMusic.com. The Mihir Joshi Band is about to commence its album's promo promotional tour, but you can catch the music video of the single Sorry on YouTube. And yes, he has an awesome voice. I've heard him sing live. Okay. Uh, for the record, uh, he has done a B in electronics from Father Agnes in band. Please welcome Mihir Joshi. <laughs> So, Mihir, welcome to Jam with Sam. Thank you very much. It's very interesting, like you said, to be on the other side of the seat where I'm being asked questions. Generally, it's the other way around, but so, awesome to be here. Thank don't you. worry, I'm going to ask you very easy questions. Go for Great. it. <laughs> so, a, a first, a very straight question. Since when have you been into music? Uh, was it during the college time or was it afterwards and when did it, when did it hit you? Yeah, I think it, it began at a very young age. I think I must have been about 10 or 11. My, my father worked with Bharat Petroleum. He just retired last year as a director with Bharat Petroleum. Now he's joined uh, Bajaj as a director again. He does, just doesn't want to stop working. He's busy as hell. But because of him, we travelled around a little bit. Uh, we lived in Calcutta for four years. We lived in Madras. So when we shifted out of Mumbai for the first time when I was about 10 years old, my uncle gave me a cassette, which was a cassette by this singer called Roger Whittaker. I think that cassette is what I attribute uh, everything to, you know, I mean, I say that I learned singing, I learned whistling, I learned, I fell in love with music because of that cassette, so it goes back about 23 years. Wow. Yeah. That I fell in love with music, but I didn't know I was going to be a performer until my college. I think uh, engineering college taught me how to sing is what I always say. Apart from that, I pretty much don't remember the names of the subjects in my last year. So yeah, I mean, but it was really interesting because I was, like he said, Father Agnel's Bandra and we had the opportunity of performing for our course. So the one month that I looked forward to in each of the years of my engineering, four years, and I finished it in four years, first class and all that jazz. But after that, I told my folks that I cannot stay an engineer. I have to get into music. But that one month where we used to do our college festival was something I looked forward to. I used to get together. I had a college band. For two years, we performed at say, Andrew's uh, Auditorium and two years in Shanmukhanand Hall. Okay. So that's where it began. So you have always been into music. You had some other career options also in between. Uh, no, I think uh, once engineering got over, I very clearly knew that uh, what I want to do is music. I wanted to sing, but all my friends from my band went abroad to do their MBA and MS. Okay. So I had no musician friends. So I thought, okay, if I'm not going to sing, if I'm not going to perform, I'll do the next best thing. I'll play the music I love on radio. Okay. And I auditioned for All India Radio. I got through in the very first uh, chance. And I, I, and in fact, the same month when I auditioned for All India Radio, I gave an entrance exam for a media-related MBA course in Pune. Okay. So I get a call from the, you know, the principal, and he asking me, he, he asked me, you know, you're an engineer. Are you sure you want to do a media course because you've done really well in the exam? I said yes, I do want to. But before I tell you yes, will you give me a couple of days? And on the next day, I got a call from All India Radio saying that I've been selected in the audition. Wow. So I told my dad, and I, I'm very serious about this, I told my dad, give me one year to do radio. It doesn't matter if I don't make a lot of money, but at the end of that year, if we feel that I'm not going anywhere, if people are not liking me as a radio jockey, if I feel, and I'll be very honest with you, if I feel that I'm not doing well, I'll leave this, 
I'll do the same entrance exam again next year and I will get through. If I got through this year, I'll get through next year. But fortunately, I never had to look back, didn't do my MBA, but I've been in the music industry for the last 10 years. I completed 10 years in June. Okay. Yeah. So you've always been uh, doing cover or you're, this is the first time you released your album? Well, uh, as a singer, yes, uh, when I started off, so radio helped me form my first band. Mm. I didn't know musicians, but the moment I got on radio, I knew very clearly that I wanted to support people who are making music in India. Mm. So I started interviewing bands and All India Radio helps you out with nothing. So I had to find out everybody's. My first interview ever was with Engelbert and it was such wow. a massive wow. honor for me to meet a man. Uh, I mean, I've grown up on music from the 40s, 50s, 60s. I, that's what, that was the first music I fell in love with. So people like Dean Martin, Nat King Cole, Sinatra, uh, Engelbert, uh, uh, Elvis, these are the people whom I loved. And for me to meet Engelbert was a major joy. And about six minutes into our interview, I had a 10 minute slot. So about six minutes into our interview, Engelbert stopped me and he said, uh, I just want to tell you that I'm very happy with the way you are going about this interview. I like how you're thinking and I like your research that you've done. I was blown away. After that, I knew that I'm not going to be afraid of talking to anybody. And I, since then, I've met all the biggest singers and musicians and whatever else. But that first interview with Engelbert, who I respect so, even now respect so much, and he was 70 years old at that point of time, hmm. for him to tell me, and he must have given like a billion interviews before that, Absolutely. for him to tell me that he enjoyed it was great. I'm really embarrassed right now because I've completely forgotten what the question was. Where were we? <laughs> Why did you ask me? How the hell did I get into this? How did you get into this? No, what, what? you asked me something which I'm completely lost about right now. What do no, we talk? It's okay. So, okay, we'll go to the next question. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so was I at least in the same ballpark of this question? Yeah, yeah. Even he's forgotten the question. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so the MJ show. You asked me about my music. Did I yes. always do yeah. covers yeah. or did I? Yeah. Yeah. There you go, found it. So yes, when I started off and I met all of these musicians through my radio show, I started interviewing Indian bands and I started seeing the musicians I wanted to work with. I knew that I like this guitar player, I like this bass player. So I found musicians of the circuit through that. And when you start off, obviously you start off playing covers. So we, I started off playing people uh, covers of bands like Beatles, The Rolling Stones, uh, Deep Purple, uh, a whole bunch of classic rock bands, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd. And then along the way, I started finding the right kind of musicians that I wanted to work with to create my own material. My, my dream always was, since I got that first cassette when I was a kid, my dream always was that my album should be released on some, at some point of time. So that re dream has finally been realized this year when my first album Mumbai Blues was released. So now it's come to a point where I'm releasing original material and covers are secondary. secondary. Okay. They're still there. You're still going to do that. Yeah, of course. That's going to be there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, like this same thing, if you are not a musician, yeah. what else would you have been? What would have been? I mean, what would I have been? I would have been very sad. <laughs> yeah, because I can I did one year of corporate work with, uh, fortunately with a music company, with okay. EMI Music. Oh, okay. This was about uh, six years ago. Mm -hmm. I, I did it with two intentions, very frankly. I wanted to understand how the music industry works and I think it's given me a great insight exactly. on uh, how the labels work. Mm -hmm. You know, because artists are very dreamy people, you know. I mean, I, I fall in that category, but because of working with the label and having, say, an engineering background, I'm also structured about the way I go about things. So working with a label made me understand how a label perceives an artist. Okay. For an artist, he always perceives himself to be like the ultimate thing. Mm. But a label, for them, you are just one more artist. So I understood how that works and that's helped me with my album now, you know, getting Times Music to release it, working with Ashish Manchanda who's produced my album, who I think is one of the mm. best producers and sound engineers in the country. Mm. It's been really interesting. So, okay. you know, I mean, I, I think music is what I would have loved to do always. But if I wasn't doing music, I would probably still be doing something in the entertainment field. field. So for that, sure. That's, that's that field. You're entertainment is what I want to do. I, okay. I, I think uh, I, I was born to be an entertainer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've never said this out loud, but now that I say it, I realize it's 100% true. I cannot imagine being, not being, like even if I have one gig in a month, for instance, Sandeep told you he's watched me perform. I, and I was just saying to someone a little while ago, I'm two different people when I'm talking in general, when I'm meeting up with people and when I'm on stage. stage. And that, that moment on stage, even if it's for an hour or two hours, and if it's once a month, that's worth it. I mean, more than everything else that I do throughout the month, that one hour on stage is, make, makes it perfect. I've seen that Mihir Joshi kick. 
<laughs> yeah. captured well over there. Oh yeah, I, I, I'm sure you all know he's a fantastic photographer. He's got some of the most awesome photos of a recent concert. That's how we first met at uh, Nandu Bhende's tribute concert. And I, I know Nandu has been associated with the Indian networker as well. I had the pleasure of meeting him, and he was very sweet to me. He was one of the nicest people in the world, and it's good that. Uh, you know, I mean, we met because of him, because of him. and his music is still alive with absolutely. everybody, you know. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. As a musician, whom do you admire? I think a uh, huge influence on me was Elvis. Uh, when I grew up, uh, before I even discovered classic rock and I saw bands like Queen. Queen is one of the bands that I've really, really loved. Queen and the Rolling Stones and, uh, you know, uh, a lot of the British bands. Uh, Eric Clapton as a blues musician myself. Uh, but Elvis made me want to get up and perform. Roger Whittaker made me want to sing, okay. but Elvis made me want to perform. The energy, which is yeah, the energy, just, and I loved how crowds reacted to him. Yeah. You know, when he was on stage, he commanded an audience. Like he knew that the person right back over there and the person right up front over here were all in the palm of his hands. And I think that's an incredible power to have. I think that's the kick that keeps me going on as well. You know, the music has changed from metal, pop, rock and roll to rap. Yeah. Death metal, thrash metal, yeah. rave, what's your take on that? You know, uh, I have a very simple philosophy about music. Uh, there is, There are only two genres of music, good music and bad music. And you'll find good music in every man-made genre. So whether it's rap, hip-hop, thrash, whatever, it's perception firstly because each person has a different way of like I may think that the music that I do is fantastic and maybe a lot of the people here I'm hoping would like the kind of music I do but to a person who loves thrash or death metal or rap he'd say oh my god this is boring music so it's, it's ultimately about perception it's how you also want to look at it and there's just good music and bad music and you just pick the good stuff and leave out the bad. So Justin Bieber comes under good music or bad music? For me, definitely in the bad, but there are a billion people, a million people at least, who would disagree with me. So yeah, that's not my kind of music, but hey, he's making a ton of money, money whom yeah. I have to compl complain, you know. So you're a social media animal. How has it benefited you? You know, I honestly, honestly think that in India, the only way that uh, an independent musician... See, in India, there are two genres of music, Bollywood and independent music. So if you're a Bollywood musician, you're pretty well sorted because, you know, you are plastered all over the world and uh, every aspect of media covers you but as an independent musician the best thing that has happened to Indian musicians is internet. Yeah. I think I reach out to more people through the internet than I could have done through anything else. Now for instance my talk show the MJ show which uh, I've had the pleasure of hosting since uh, 1st of August last year uh, it's genuinely changed things for me as a musician though I I'm the host there, I'm just a talk show host there. It's made my presence known to so many more people, not just in India, but across the world because it's on YouTube and it's got that kind of virality. Or say, for instance, if I had Shan on my show and Shan tweets saying, catch my episode with Mihir or Kailash Kher sends out a tweet and he has 3 lakh followers following him, Absolutely. they all get to know who I am. Absolutely. So right now when my album came out, inadvertently, and I had honestly not planned it. And it, when I, because I, I was doing the same thing on radio. Mm. I had interviewed over 200 artists on radio. But you gotta realize, radio being as incredible as it is, still does not compare, does not even come in the same league as the digital medium. Because right now, when you are on radio, even if you are on Radio Mirchi and you are, say, the biggest fan, I mean, the biggest radio jockey, you're still reaching out only to your city. Yes. Unless it's a syndicated show and going across the country, even then, it's only to those cities and the people who are, people who are listening Listen. to radio at on at a specific point of time. There's no repeat. Uh, value over there Absolutely. and there's no visibility and if you want to be a musician the thing that you want is apart from people listening to you you want people to see you I mean I did radio for eight years where people had no idea how I look but now in the last two years because of television and now the MJ show a lot more people know who I am apart from what my voice sounds like so for a musician I think that's very important and I think social media is the best thing and I would recommend it to every young musician who is starting off who's creating his own band starting off with his first song Record your jam sessions, record your first gig, put it up on YouTube. Whether it's bad or not, put it up. Let people know and let them see your evolution. I mean, my I have videos of mine which go back from around nine years ago till today. Okay. So you will see, I was pretty terrible back then. I'm not incredible now, but I'm definitely a lot better. You know, so 
yeah so it's 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 fantastic i think social media is the most amazing thing that's happened to musicians in india so two of your favorite social media what do you prefer using uh for me 100% uh, facebook and twitter i mean uh, youtube see youtube uh, the way i see it is uh, there's not much interactivity that has still happened for me yet what i mean by that is if i put up a video it's not like i'm getting 300 comments under it where the interactivity happens Absolutely. so there it's 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 like a platform for me for me youtube is more like a billboard that i'll put say in the city if i had the bollywood budget for my album i'd put a billboard saying hey mumbai blues is out yeah. so that is what youtube is for me so it gives me that visual, visual element and that visibility which is helping me out mm. but for me facebook and twitter are really and i'm not really explored twitter uh, in a very yeah. big way i'd love to and i i i'd uh, simple plug mehir joshi music is what i am on facebook twitter instagram and uh, and what i miss instagram facebook youtube and Twitter. Twitter. So please follow me, and I'll uh, I'd love to stay in touch with everyone. But I genuinely believe that Facebook and Twitter are incredible for you to get. And Facebook even more so, though I know a lot of people in the media space prefer Twitter. Okay. I think for musicians, Facebook yes, is fantastic yes, yes. because after you do a concert, you can't tweet 40 photos of you. but you can put up an album of 40 photos like when you finish an event yeah. and you put up 40 yeah. photos it's great because all of us go out and check out his page and see okay where are we you know in in all of that so that's a great thing that facebook does for you which twitter can't yeah so for me yeah facebook is that's the true. number 1 twitter would be number 2 uh and uh YouTube would be three and Instagram would be four. I, okay. I have started really using yeah. Instagram, Instagram in a big way as well. And because I connect you Instagram to YouTube, I mean to Facebook and, and Twitter, Twitter, immediately it goes on to my fan page, it goes on to my personal page, Absolutely. and it goes out on Twitter yeah. as well. Yeah. I mean, Instagram is quite popular. Instagram is quite, quite popular. popular. Yeah. Right. Today, like uh, I had tweeted about this show, and we got covered by Times, uh, yeah. by Mumbai Mirror. Yeah. A must attend event. Yeah. And that was the uh, you know all these years of hard work has paid off over there. So I tweeted that. I mentioned Meher in that over there, yeah. and Junjun Wala, who is like the god of Twitter, <laughs> he's got eighty-five thousand followers. Yeah, he retweeted that. Yeah, and I was like, wow, he retweeted that. He says, no, Meher is a good friend of mine. It's a fantastic. I mean, he got such a good. I mean, that's yeah. that's how it works. That's how. But it honestly, works. I, I, you know what? Uh, since we have mentioned him, I gotta say he's been. We just met through Twitter. That's how I know him. But we've become such good friends, and he's a genuine supporter. That I don't. A lot of people think I pay the guy to tweet about me. I don't. He just likes me. I like him. I tweet about him. He tweets about me. It's just that. But it just shows you the amount of power that a, a person with a good following on Twitter has. Absolutely. I mean, you know, eighty-five thousand people for a guy who is not a, a you know, like a, a an actor or an actress or whatever is fantastic. fantastic. It's purely based on the content he's been yeah, putting yeah. out, and I've been very fortunate. Not just him; uh, there have been some other very nice people who've been following me and who've been writing about or been tweeting about the things. That's exactly how you get the word out. You know, if you have interesting people following you who have a lot of followers, and if you put out a message, they like you. They put out a tweet Absolutely. about you. Absolutely, the that's, word that's, spreads. That's where it works. Over that's how it works. And engagement is the key. Exactly. I've seen a lot of people having accounts. You know, you follow them. They will not even follow you back. Correct. They'll be following seventy thousand people and have maybe hundred, two hundred followers. Correct. So those are the people who don't engage. If you engage with that person, the Correct. moment you follow back, that person, wow, he's yeah. following you back, and it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt Because at all. As long yeah. as the guy is not spamming you or Correct. you're not seeing on his timeline. Correct. It work. It, it's, it's, no, no. It's I general. I have made it a habit. Uh, incidentally, another good thing that engineering gave me was I was never afraid of technology. Okay. The moment I got out of engineering, I got into radio. I was the first radio jockey to build his own website. I made it on Geo Cities back then. Wow. I remember. Oh, wow. I had my own guest book. I had. So before uh, and this is before Orkut happened. I had my fan club on Orkut. I had a fan club on Facebook, and people were always interacting with me because they knew that I was one of the few people who would reply back to every message that came. I had come back home from my radio show at one o'clock in the in the in the morning, at like one a.m. and i'd be up till about 2:30 replying back to all the posts that would come on my guest book i'd make sure that everybody gets a reply back that day i'd just check out you know what is the feedback that my show has got and i've done that even now even today uh, my facebook fan page reaches out to about 31000 people my personal page i've reached that 5000 limit now i delete 10 people so if i don't know you at all you probably have gotten deleted so i keep that 4990 so that now suppose i meet someone here like i met tanvi and i want to add her i still have that option because after 5 thousand you can add more people but yeah so about 38000 people i reach out through facebook i get a message from any of them i reply back even today on the same day 100% yeah one good thing youtube has done is 
to prevent all these comments which are you know others <coughs> earlier anybody could comment on your any rubbish comment correct so you have to have a youtube signed into your account correct then only you can comment now yep yep so that is prevented a lot of you know uh, spammy, spammy comments, comments yeah, yeah, over big time. a lot of yep okay which is your favorite game of past time pardon your favorite game, game or a past time okay i'm a huge football fan okay. um, and uh, i've used uh, facebook again to help football fans come together like this is a community for networkers to come together we i created about 2 years ago a community on facebook called the football club yeah, i saw that and uh, it's reached 1700 people wow. almost right now wow. each game of the world cup for instance just the last 12 days on an average each post we keep a match day thread which we pin to the top has been getting around 400 to 500 comments and it's reached up to wow. 800 900 comments on good days you know when there are good matches i i can i can just imagine and for the finals people are actually flying down from delhi and bangalore and wherever else to come here to meet together just to watch the finals wow. no other agenda except for getting together Fantastic. the football fans people football club fans and watching a football game together Amazing. so football has always been a massive passion i'm a huge comic book fan i've been collecting comics since i was a kid and i'm a serious collector for anybody who thinks comics are meant for kids you can have a conversation with me and i will prove it otherwise and to put it in monetary perspective in the last 10 years that i've been earning i've spent easily close to 3 to 4 lakhs on comics wow. there you go so i'm a huge comic book collector i collect blu rays and i watch football fantastic yes people say there's no money making music all musicians are crying hmm. because of piracy correct so what do you feel about this what can be done i don't think any musician today's generation should expect any money to come out of album sales yes i said it i'm saying it and this is going to go up on youtube i'm assuming so if you are hearing it yes i'm saying it again no musician should expect to money make any money from album sales if you make any money that's gravy call it your time pass money do whatever you want with it party with it but that's not your income the income for any musician is in live performances so the main way what you do why why do you release an album why do you release it through a good label like i have done with times music the idea is to give yourself as much visibility as possible mm-hmm. if you make money while you are releasing your album that's fantastic but realistically speaking there is probably one percentage of all musicians who make a career out of selling albums so like your beyonce and your that level people are making money by selling a million copies even the biggest artists abroad are selling about a thousand copies in india and just, i say just a thousand just a thousand copies oh. and i say this not out of ignorance i say this with complete facts i'll give you an example when i was working with emi music robbie williams album which was uh, no i'll give you a better example arctic monkeys a band in the uk was released in about about 6 years ago their first album in the first week of release in uk sold over 100000 copies and it was a record in uk or whatever in india over a year that album sold about 1500 copies over one year as opposed to one week being one and a half lakh copies or something wow. like that wow. yeah. so, so yeah my logic is No, it's okay. Piracy happens. Please, if you are, if you heard my album and you've you've seen it on iTunes, download it, share it on songs. Pk. I don't care. More people get to know about it. I'm happy. Songs. Pk is a Pakistani site by any chance? It is. I think I, they primarily put up Bollywood songs, but I'd be happy if my music is up there as well. What the hell? Just put it out everywhere. Give it away for free. If you feel like paying me for my music, uh, get in touch with my manager. I'll happily take money. Okay. Yes. Fantastic. uh one request from you what is you going to sing that song and second today is michael jackson's fifth anniversary mj so, 20 mj yes. mj to mj oh you know what i got to tell you this uh very uh it's a very funny thing uh when i grew up and you know i was a huge michael jackson fan growing up uh throughout my teenage years i was like super kicked and i have been so happy that my father and my mother decided to name me with an M. So growing up throughout you know I used to feel so kicked about the fact that I share my initials with a guy whom I respect so tremendously I mean so much and you know uh, the other cool thing that happened is when I started the MJ show I knew a lot of people would make jokes about the MJ relation in fact my first few guests I remember Vishal had said in fact Shekhar had said in their promo watch the MJ show not Michael Jackson me Joshi uh, Vishal had hummed like a Michael Jackson tune uh, as a you know when he did the promo But now when you search for the MJ show on YouTube or on Google 
my show comes up not michael jackson but back then if you search for the mj show the first 25 results would be michael jackson videos and then somewhere down there you'd see uh, one of my episodes but now we put out 50 episodes which is actually about 200 plus videos because each episode is broken up into three or four parts of okay. 10 minutes each so now if you search for the mj show meher joshi's show comes up fantastic which is cool that's cool social media seo <laughs> so yeah, I, uh, so what I'd love to do is, uh, uh, like I said, the album that I've released is a, uh, is, is a blues and rock and roll album. Uh, it's a tribute in a way to the kind of music I grew up on and the kind of music I loved. So one of the songs, the, the title track of the album is called Mumbai Blues. It's, it's working title back in the day when we were recording it was called Travelling Home Blues. And it's a song, the idea was I wanted to have songs which people can genuinely relate with. The songs are not about Mumbai, but it's music coming out of Mumbai, which is why it's called Mumbai Blues. Just to sort of rewind a little bit, uh, the, the song Mumbai Blues is basically about traffic jams in Mumbai and for a guy going back home to his loved one, to his wife, to his girlfriend and he's getting pissed off about being in the Mumbai traffic jam. And what I wanted to do is, what I've seen a lot of blues musicians abroad do is, they've always incorporated the names of their cities in the songs. And I wanted to do that with at least one of my songs. So in Mumbai Blues, we've done that. Incidentally, the other songs are, there's a song about potholes, there's a song about, um, uh, there's a song about Sachin Tendulkar, which is a tribute of mine to Sachin Tendulkar. And if you see the first three verses, it sounds like the guy is telling the girl, I'll give you everything you want. I'll give you diamonds and pearls. I'll get you fire from the sun. I'll keep you satisfied. And the last verse, you find out what it's all about. He says, I'll give you all you want and more. Just let me watch this match, baby, because Sachin's going to score. So it's a, it's a tribute to the entire generation of men who watch cricket only because they believe Sachin Tendulkar is going to score. So that's one of the songs. There's one more song about, this is something that all the men will relate with about going shopping with your wife or your girlfriend. So in the first three verses of the song, you feel like it's a breakup song and the guy is feeling so sad that his wife or his girlfriend has left him and gone. And the last verse you find out, he says, how long will you be? And she says, drop the drama, baby. Today you're shopping with me. So it's the drama that goes on in a man's mind while his wife or his girlfriend is in the changing room trying on inordinate amounts of clothes. And you know, he's just sitting and getting frustrated. So these are the kind of songs. I wanted stories that people can relate with. And uh, that's Mumbai Blues. So please listen to it. It's on iTunes, Nokia Mix Radio, Ghana.com. If you want to be, uh, you know, if you want to be cheap and listen to it for free. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Ghana.com is free streaming. You can listen to the entire album over there. And yeah, please uh, check it out. Right now, however, I'm going to play you Mumbai Blues, the title track of the album. And uh, I'm going to stand up because I don't sit and sing. <laughs> Join along in terms of clapping, even if you don't do words. So. I wanna get home to my baby, but I just can't move on. I wanna get home to my baby, for her I wrote this song. Hey! 
bridges in hearts and not on Ha, huh, where's the guy who's supposed to be the Michael Jackson dancer? I think is he here? Is Has Russell, he come? Is Russell come? Hey, I yeah. I got to tell you I saw his video today. He sent me a video on Twitter. I think you're you're a fantastic dancer, man. Really really cool. Do you have a track? If I sing but how, we don't have, we don't have music. So how will you get the beat to dance on? Okay, we'll get people to clap. Come. Let's 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 give him a big round of applause, guys. He's a fantastic dancer. A little bit, okay? We'll do which song? Tell me a song that you want. Okay. Uh, Billy Jean's good. And since it is his fifth uh, death anniversary, I think it's perfect that we all pay a little tribute to Michael Jackson. So what we'll do is we'll get that beat going on first. You remember how Billy Jean used to be there? Tum 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 tum. Pa da pam, pa da pam, pa da pam, pa da pam. She was more like a beauty queen from a movie scene. I said, no mind, but what do you mean? I am the one who would dance on the floor in the round. Stormy, her name was Billie Jean. As she crossed the scene, then every head turned with eyes a dream of being the one who would dance on the floor in the round. People always told me, be careful what you do. Don't go around breaking young girls' hearts. And mother always told me, be careful who you love. Be careful what you do. Cause the lie becomes the truth. Hey, Billy Jean is not my lover. She's just a girl who claims that I am the one. But the kid is not my son. Good stuff, man. Thanks a lot. Very cool. <coughs> yeah, he sang really high, Michael Jackson did. So, yes. thank you, Mihir. Thank you very much. Fantastic having you on the show over here. And this is one of our first special mugs which we have got. Oh, man, that's so cool. <laughs> okay. So, I've got my branding. My plug is there. but you know, Full so on, man. Very, very cool. Uh, I want to say a big thanks to Sampath. Uh, we just met about like a couple of months ago, but uh, really gotten to know him in the last few days. I think he's doing a fantastic job. How about we give him a big round of applause for this? <laughs> I want to thank each and every one of you. I'm, like I said a little while ago, I'm sorry I've not had the chance to really meet up with you guys before the event began. And I'm going to have to rush right now because there's a Michael Jackson tribute night happening at Blue Frog tonight. And I've been called there to sing a song. So I'm going to leave uh, in another 15-20 minutes from now. But please, I'm easily accessible online. And like I said, I genuinely do reply to everyone. Just look me up online and I'd love to stay in touch. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thank man. You. Thanks a lot. Thank